All right. So let's get started here. We are talking this week about multi vibrators. This is ERT 201 Digital Fundamentals, uh, week number nine. Multi vibrators. So a multi vibrator is an electronic circuit that switches between two states, creating a rectangular wave like this. This is very useful for making clocks, like we've done with our flip-flops, which can be used for flip-flops, counters, and bit shifting. Okay, there are three types we're going to talk about today. That is the A-stable, the bi-stable, and the mono-stable. The A-stable is the first one of these. Key thing here, no input required. These things just run on their own without an input coming into them, and they produce a nice output wave like this. This is very useful for us. An example of this, a flashing circuit. Okay, which we will use quite a bit, creating a clock or a flasher. The second type, the bi-stable. An example of this would be a flip-flop. So basically we give it some type of input trigger, like our clock signal to a JK flip-flop, and we get a transition output. So we've demonstrated this with a clock signal, with our flip-flop. And we get a toggle type signal like this that changes every time we get the, the pulse uh, input to it. Okay, that is the bi-stable. And the third one, the mono-stable, we call this a one-shot. What happens here, we give it an input signal and we get an output that is a pulse, but this pulse is a, of a defined width. And we can control what that width is. So every time we give it a, every time we do a pulse, regardless of how long the pulse is, we will always get a set consistent output from it. Okay. That is the one shot. So hysteresis, we're switching between state one to state two. Now this allows the transition from state one to state two to take place at one threshold value, but this transition from state two to one to take place at a different value. So as we move along here, what we will see So I'll go through my example first. So basically what you get is a dead band in between these two things, which I will demonstrate here. Okay, so let's say that your body temperature uh, makes you want to put on a sweater when you are too cold. So let's say you are right here, and this line represents your body temperature okay if you realize that you are too cold right here you're going to react we cross this point here you're going to react by putting on a sweater now once you do that your body temperature starts to go up Okay, and once you go up, you enter into this area here, which we call the comfort zone. Now we want to live in this comfort zone. Okay, now this is defined as a dead band between being too hot and too cold. So once we're in here, we are nice and comfortable. We can continue being happy with our sweater on in here. Now eventually we're going to hit a point where 
we're going to suddenly find, figure out that now we were too cold here. This is good. This is good. This is good. Now all of a sudden we are now too hot. Now the way that we react to being too hot, once we come up here, is we take the sweater off. That will cause our body temperature to start to lower again. And we will re-enter this comfort zone. Now we're happy again. We're back into this dead band again. So we can live in this comfort zone for quite a long time because this point where we're too cold and the point where we're too hot have a separation between them. So they are not defined at the exact same temperature. It is a much lower temperature if you were going from no sweater to put a sweater on. It's at a much higher temperature when you say I have a sweater on and I need to take it off. Okay, and this is basically hysteresis. This is the same type of phenomenon. We define a comfortable working, a working temperature in between, and the transition points are not at the same temperature. Okay, now let's say we didn't have hysteresis. What would this look like with our sweater example? We would go from here, we're realizing we are too cold, putting our sweater on, now we're too hot. As soon as we have our sweater up and we take our sweater back off again, now we're too cold again. Now we're too hot. Now we're too cold. And we just keep on oscillating back and forth like that. So what we get instead of a nice smooth line like that where we can kind of ride in that uh, comfort zone, here we're moving like that so we never get a good comfort zone and the reason we have that is because there basically is no dead band in here our differentiating differential point between too hot and too cold are basically the exact same point we don't have that hysteresis going on in here okay and this is no good we don't like this so this is very difficult on a control system as well or any type of electrical system is having a threshold point that makes your decisions at exactly the same point. So let's examine hysteresis again. So if we come along here, we want to be able to come up like this. So as our, for example, as our voltage were to increase on our chip, we want to transition from low to high. at one voltage set point. But then as you start to decrease your voltage, we don't want to switch back at that exact same point. We want to be able to ride right through that point and not switch until we get over here. Okay. Now if we start to increase our voltage again, we're not going to switch back to high when we get here, even though these are in line. We want to switch from low to high at this point here. So we can enjoy that good dead band where in this upper part here, we are in the, we are at a high signal. This one here, we are at a low signal. So we have all this area in between here which is our dead band. And that is basically how hysteresis works and enables us to have a little bit of play in between our uh, signal levels. So this comes into play when we start using some of the chips we're going to use with multivibrators. So our inverter chip we're going to use is actually a 14 chip instead of a 00 chip. And you can see this has the hysteresis symbol right on the chip. This is called a Schmidt trigger type of inverter. 
and this employs some hysteresis with it. So we look at the uh, the specs for this. If you want to switch, the threshold from switching between a low signal to a high signal happens at about 1.6 volts. The threshold to switch from a high signal to a low signal is not at 1.6 volts. It's actually all the way down at 0 0.8 volts. So you have a dead band of about 0 0.8 volts that you can still operate in. So you don't get an oscillation uh, on your uh, on your switching if you approach somewhere in that middle range. Now another important thing we're going to talk about this week is we're going to start using capacitors in our circuits. So these here are capacitors. These are electronic devices that are capable of storing an electrical charge. They are constructed of two conductive plates separated by a dielectric material between them. The power is applied on one of these plates and the charge builds up. Once that charge reaches a certain level, it jumps to the other place and discharges all at once. Now this is very useful because capacitors are time dependent. They charge uh, proportional to time. And by varying the capacitance in our circuits, we can control their timing. So this gives us the ability now to create timing circuits. Now, a couple of very important things we're going to talk about. If we start dealing with these circuits at home, so building these on your breadboards, important things here. Wiring capacitors. backwards can make them explode. These things can actually explode. So we need to use safety glasses when we're working with capacitors. So this capacitor looks like this. It has a long leg and a short leg. So if we're looking at a capacitor like this, long leg and short leg, this one is our positive. This one here is our negative. Make sure you put these in the correct way or else they have the potential to explode on you. Okay. All right. So let's go through the first, the three labs we're actually going to do in Tinkercad. This first one here, we're going to wire it up like this. And what we're going to see, when you power this on, it takes about 35 seconds for this to actually happen. But what you will see is this circuit, this capacitor here, will charge this circuit. And the voltage will increase, 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 until you hit about 2.63 volts, I think you'll see in Tinkercad. At that point, you'll get a transition on this, and your light is going to go from red to green. So you'll actually be able to see in time that this capacitor is charging the circuit, and your lights will transition when you hit a certain voltage. And that voltage, I believe, is about 2.63 volts. Okay, so your circuit's going to look like this wire that up. We actually show the oscilloscope. Uh, sorry, I don't show the oscilloscope in this one. We'll do it in a later one. Uh, so this lab shows how capacitors can be used to create solid state electric timing devices. A capacitor is a function of time. So let's look at the Tinkercad demo over here. So here we are demonstrating the bistable multivibrator. So this is uh, part A of the multivibrator lab. So the setup I have here, I have the Schmidt trigger inverter. So that is the HC14 chip. I've got a dip switch. This is connected a little bit differently than we normally do. So this is just basically a dip switch connecting to ground or zero volts. I have a wire that goes over here. 
uh, I have a capacitor. This capacitor is set as 470 microfarads. I have a very large resistor, a 100 kilo ohm resistor. I've got a ground wire. I've got my chip is powered, and then I have this other wire coming off of here going to pin one of the chip. The output, which is pin two, goes over to the middle of this bridge of LEDs here. So the red is going to indicate that the chip is producing a logic one. The green will indicate the chip is producing a logic zero. And then I have a multimeter connected here, so I'll actually watch the, the voltage on this over time. Uh, so this connects to zero volts and then connects to pin one of the chip or basically the output of the uh, capacitor. Okay, so what we're going to see here, and I've run this a couple times already, and I know that this takes about 35 seconds for this to actually charge up enough to, to trip. So what we're going to see here, when we run it, you'll see the on the multimeter, the voltage will start to climb. So I'm running at about 6 volts over here, which gives me about 5 volts in my system. Uh, if I turn this switch from off to on, you'll see that my voltage drops back down to, all, to zero. Okay, so that's basically discharging the capacitor. If I turn this switch back off again, it'll start climbing again. So you'll see the time is running in a very slow mode. So that's two seconds. Two and a half seconds. So it's going up very, very slowly. Uh, just this is the way the Tinkercad does this. Uh, but what we see here now is the red light is on, green light is off. What we'll see, just from because I've done this a couple times, uh, once our voltage hits about two and a half volts, our chip will actually switch. So we'll transition and we'll actually go from the red light to the green light. So this is the uh, the bi-stable multi-vibrator, which is demonstrating how our input signal, which is our trigger, our logic one coming in here, uh, allows this circuit to basically run and over time as the uh, capacitor charges over time, what it will do is it will eventually produce a signal that once it gets to a certain level, that as the capacitor charges, the chip will then transition. Right now we're giving a logic zero. Once we get to a certain point, it will read it as a logic one, and then our output signal will go from a one to a zero because this is a not or an, or an, an inverter chip. So once we see this hit uh, two and a half volts or around there, we'll see these lights change color. So right now we're at eight seconds. Uh, we'll see how long this actually takes to, to climb up there. But that is basically demonstrating uh, this type of multivibrator. going. I will just sit here and watch my fantasy football team as this continues to go. It's 2.6. Any time now, it's 
probably going to go. There we go. Okay, about 2.63 is when it switched, and that was about 36 seconds of actual elapsed time. Uh, so that, and that is pretty true to what we see in the actual uh, lab if you wired this on your board as well. It does take quite a long time. The first time we did this last year in the lab, we couldn't figure out if we were doing things right or not because it, it does, you flick the switch and then just it just sits there and then 30 seconds later it actually switches. So it is kind of weird to watch, but that is what we're demonstrating here. So that is basically the capacitor is charging, 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 charging. Once we hit the threshold voltage, it will switch. And then if I come over here and flick this switch, it's going to discharge that capacitor. You'll see the voltage drop back down to zero, and we'll go back from green to red light again. I'll do that right now. So hit the switch. There we go. We lose all our voltage, and our light is red again. If I flip it back, there we go. We're charging again. All right, so I'm going to stop that simulation, and that is the part A of the lab. Okay, so we did that one. So that was part A. We're now going to look at part B. So this one is the monostate. This is the, sorry, a stable multivibrator. This is our general flashing circuit. So we're going to wire it up like this. There is a formula you can use to calculate depending on the capacitance and resistance and the uh, switching voltage. You can actually calculate the rate that this will flash at. Okay, so that is shown here. So we are going to demonstrate this one as well. We will use this one for several things uh, in our lab. That is shown here. Demonstrated in Tinkercad. Okay, this is part B of the lab. So this is the A stable. Uh, verify that the A stable multi vibrator. So this one is interesting because this basically creates for us a blinking light, which we can use quite a bit. Okay, we'll use this for a lot of other circuits that we do along the way. Uh, so very useful circuit. Uh, we'll use this when we start doing our counters and bit shift registers in the next two weeks. Uh, so it is pretty simple. Uh, it is basically just a, a capacitor and a resistor and the chip. And they just feed back into each other. And that creates a signal that uh, is a a stable multivibrator signal. So it's basically just a wave that goes on and off with a set frequency. And what we can do is we can manipulate what that frequency is by switching uh, or by, by adjusting the relationship between the capacitance and the resistance here. So we can connect up this oscilloscope. So an oscilloscope is basically a multimeter that uh, takes multiple readings at various time intervals that you can set and then create a graph based off of that. So this is very effective to demonstrate what this actual waveform looks like because you basically get voltage readings over time. So each, if I click on this here, you'll see each division, so each little tiny square of this right now represents 100 milliseconds. So I can change that now the oscilloscope is not super uh, responsive here, so it's not the best, but you can change this. You'll see the reaction of that in just a second here. But basically we can do this to measure what is the frequency or the period of these waveforms that we're getting out of this. And then you'll see uh, as well, there is a formula, which is uh, 
frequency is voltage divided by the capacitance times the resistance. So by that, if you look at the, the period or the oscillation of the uh, of how long in seconds the actual blinking is, uh, that is directly proportional to the so not demonstrating very well here. Change this to point one. That is directly proportional to the uh, the resistance and the capacitance. So, for example, if you want to change the blinking rate of this, you can see I am about two and a half sections here. Or if you look at the time up here, this will blink at about uh, on for a quarter of a second, off for a quarter of a second is what I'm seeing right now. If I double this, so if I use a four, Kilo ohm resistor. You'll see my waveform basically is going to double in size. So I basically slow down my blinking by a factor of two. If I change this to one, one kilo ohm you'll see I'll cut my waveform in half. Now I'm getting about uh, before it was about a quarter second on, quarter second off. Now it's about an eighth of a second on, eighth of a second off. I can do that again if I put this at 0.5 kilo ohms. see again I'll cut that in half again so we can basically create a a, uh, a blinker or a flashing light or a flashing signal of whatever frequency we want just by adjusting putting whatever resistance we want to put into here okay so now that is down to you can see in one second I get about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably pulses per second. I put this back up at two. So this is one second all the way across here. Before I had about eight pulses per second, I should now get about two pulses per second. And you would actually see this uh, as, the, as the, the blinking rate. Once again, our time is so messed up in Tinkercad here that it doesn't really show very well. If I want to change this again to four, I can get about one pulse per second. So about half a second on, half a second off. That's spanning about half a second on, half a second off right there. This entire left to right is about one full second. Okay, so that's using the oscilloscope function in Tinkercad and showing how you can make a, an A-stable multivibrator or a flasher uh, circuit very easily that we'll use in a lot of different labs uh, and how we can easily adjust the frequency or the period of that flasher just by adjusting our resistance, okay? And the third one we're gonna do in Tinkercad using the 555 timer. This is an actual timing circuit. So we're gonna build it up like this. It uses two different resistors, RA and RB. We can use this to calculate some things here. This is basically the how long your timing circuit is on and how long it is off. We can vary that depending on these resistances. All right, this is part C of the lab. This is the A-stable multivibrator. Bring this up here. So this is using the 555 chip shown here. So we wire it up like this. We've got two capacitors in here. 
uh, and we have the green light and red light. So what you'll see here is this oscillates back and forth between green and red. So the two capacitors combine together to form a uh, two different capacitances. Uh, and we can calculate it's basically the ratios between these to determine the on time and off time, or as we call the duty cycle of the of the output here. So the output is represented by the red light, which is on. Uh, when the timer is off, we get the green light. So you can see on the oscilloscope here, and from the calculations in the lab. So the on, we get about six and a half blocks. Each of these individual blocks represents about a tenth of a second. So we get about six and a half of these in the on state and about three and a half in the off state, which is roughly the calculations that we show in the lab as well. So that is about, we have a, a period of about one second here, uh, and we get about 650 milliseconds on, about 325 milliseconds off as a result of this circuit. So this is how we wire it, and you can do some experimentation with that. You will notice that if you change uh, the value of the two resistors, this one here and this one here, you can actually change up that timing a little bit. So if we took this down to two, and now we start to get a, a different timing showing up here. You can see that is the adjusting the off time. Okay, so this is using the 555 timer. This is part C of the lab. We'll demonstrate that in the lab. And we'll also, and the final one we're going to demonstrate, we're going to add in a diode over here. And now we will vary resistance A and resistance B and show how we can switch up the timing and control that timing circuit very accurately. Okay, let's demonstrate that one. All right, this is part D of the lab. This is using the 555 timer again, but now what we've done, we've gone and added this diode in here. So what this does is it bypasses the one uh, resistor uh, and what this allows us to do now is we can now manipulate the on and off timing of the circuit. So you'll see right now what we've got here with our circuit we've got a pretty consistent uh, this is this resistor is 4.7 kilo ohms this resistor is also 4.7 kilo ohms and what that gives us is a nice balance of on and off time between the two. If you look at the calculations from the lab, you'll see that you get a good balance between those two. And when you look at the waveform on the oscilloscope, you'll see that the on and off time are, they should be exactly the same. It doesn't show them exactly the same on our oscilloscope here, but it is pretty close. The waveform we're showing here. Our blink rate should be about the same. These should both be about 325 okay, we'll milliseconds. Cross one volt on 325 milliseconds off. So we're getting a pretty consistent square wave from that. Now what we can do with these resistors is we can manipulate on and off independently now that we have this diode in here. So part D of the lab is asking us to change these. So we're going to first of all change resistor A up to 100 kilo ohms. So let's put that in at 100. 
And we can now do the math to calculate this. What our, uh, the time high, the time low, the total period, total frequency, and the percentage due cycle. We should be able to calculate those. But what you will see now, we get the time high is very long compared to the time low. The time low is only going to be a blip on here compared to the time high. So we are red for much longer than we are green. Making that. So there's our go back low for green, back high again. And that's just a small blip on there. Vice versa, if I put this back to 4.7, that'll bring us back to our nice back and forth square wave again. I change this resistor here. This is RB. If I change that one up to 100, I'll see a dramatically longer off period and only a blip for on. So we're going to be mostly green. Then we'll get a sudden red and then back to green again. And that will show up on the oscilloscope here with just a flat line and then that's just a sudden blip on here. Okay, so this is how the time scale is running so slowly right now. Come on. And again, you can... Oh, there we go. And again, you can calculate the... Uh, what that actually works out to mathematically. So we'll see this little small blip on the radar here. There we go. Now if you change that to a number much lower than that, put it down to 10. That's like a 2 to 1 ratio. Now we should see about a 2 to 1 ratio of on versus okay, off. Okay, we crossed over into 2 volts. 2.1. Let's see what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So we have values of 4.7 and 10 right now. You can see we are off for about twice as long as we are on. So by using the 555 chip in this configuration with the two resistors, we can control exactly how we want this waveform to look. Okay, so that is part D of the lab. And unfortunately, this one will not run uh, very well in Tinkercad. But what this would do, here we have an input. You would basically give it an input and it would generate a one-shot. This is our mono stable, our one-shot. And the, the duration of this can be calculated for, based on this formula here. That is dependent on the value of the resistance and capacitance here. Okay, so in summary, capacitors store charge. They can be used to create timing circuits. 
we can vary the resistance and capacitance in our circuits to change the timing. And we can calculate and control this as well. And multi vibrators are fundamental circuits in electronics. We're going to be using these types of circuits in the next couple labs. All right, questions?